I've spent quite a few months now getting to know my Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid long termer. I've been driving it to work, driving my family around and also embarking on some big road trips. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about my round trip 3000 kilometer journey to Adelaide and back. I'm going to be talking about what sort of electric range I'm seeing out of this car and finally I'm going to be talking about the several family friendly features which really make this car up for the task and also some things which I do think could be improved. Before we talk about what it's like to take this car on a road trip, let's talk specifically about what it's like to take a plug-in hybrid on such a trip. Now, for a bit of context, the day before I went on my road trip, I drove this to work and back just using electric power, zero petrol involved. And ideally, this is really where a plug-in hybrid shines, in that ability to drive around most days just on electric power, but you still have the flexibility to do those long trips when you need them. Now, those of you who are familiar with my Subaru Outback video will remember that I have previously done this Adelaide trip and I usually do it in one day. However, this time I had a three month baby on board, so that just quite simply was not an option. So I ended up breaking the trip up into two days. Each day I would start with a fully charged battery and I embarked out onto the open road. In total, driving there and back, I charged nine times, adding about 60 kilowatt hours, which effectively supplemented my fuel use. As you can imagine with having a little one on board, this meant that I was stopping fairly frequently anyway. So this worked in the favor of the Outlander as I was able to find myself a Chadmo fast charger and able to recharge the battery in it to about 80% in about 35 minutes. Now, having three people and a dog and all their stuff on board was unfortunately a little bit too much for the Outlander's boot. So we had to get some roof racks on it, so we had a place to put the pram, which unfortunately did hurt the aerodynamics. And you do see that in the fuel economy that we ended up getting. It was about seven and a half on the way there and about eight and a half on the way back, which is not great, but unfortunately, as I said, the aerodynamics were a bit mucked up by the pram on the roof. Now, going back to Adelaide was really great experience, not just because I got to see what this was like on the open road, but also because it was the first time that I got to charge it from home, which meant that every day I would set out with a full battery, come back in. And ultimately, I was just using a regular three pin socket like you have at home. It was enough time to charge overnight quite easily. You can even set the recharge time to kick in automatically and stop when you need it to. So as far as range, I was seeing about 60 to 74 kilometers in total before the petrol engine needed to kick in. And I wanna be clear, I was not being sympathetic to this car. I had the roof racks on, I was often doing a little, bit, little stints on the highway, I was not babying it at all. And I do want to do further efficiency tests on this car to see just how far I can take it on a single charge. Now, big trips are terrific fun, but for most of us, it's not what we do the most of. Most of the time, I've been spending my day taking the family around on the weekend and just going to and from work. And I wanna focus on the latter, of how this is like as a family car. Now, many of these features aren't exclusive to the Outlander, but collectively, they add up to make what I think is a very effective family car. Now, like many Australians, I live in an area where I have an underground car park of which I park this car every night. And when I'm getting into the car, I often find that it's quite hot and thus I wanna put on the air conditioning, get it circulating so that my little baby can be nice and cool when we head out onto the open road and while she's still sort of cool while I'm getting all my stuff in the car and getting ready. And this is one area where the Outlander really shines because as long as you've got just a little bit of charge in the battery, you can have the car turned on air conditioning full blast and you're not filling the cabin with petrol fumes or diesel fumes which is always a bit of a disadvantage of, of combustion cars I find. I will add to that though that the air conditioning in this car could be just a little bit stronger for when you get into the devastatingly hot days I've found that some other rivals out there are able to pump out the hot air just a little bit faster. Every week or so I find myself getting into a new press car so as you can imagine the thing that comes along with that is I have to switch over the baby seat from my personal car or this car to the new one. So I'd like to say I'm fairly well acquainted with this rather tedious task. And one of the main things I find that really makes the difference in making this process just a little bit less annoying is how wide a door opens and the Outlander does pretty well. It opens pretty much to 90 degrees, not quite as wide as a CRV, for example, but still pretty good nonetheless. Now we've got the door open, you can see we've got a rearwards facing child seat in here. This one's just slightly bigger than my personal one I have. But one of the great things I've noticed about the Outlander is that it has such a huge amount of room in the back seat that the front passenger almost doesn't really need to move their seat forward much at all, or if they do, just only slightly. 
Mitsubishi does add tinted rear windows on the second row on the Aspire Fev grade and up. And when I was going to Adelaide, I did find that I needed to put on some extra ugly sunshade things just to keep a little bit more light out of the rear cabin. Now, if you're buying the Exceed Fev grade and up, Mitsubishi does add some pull-up sunshades. However, you can also add it to this grade for just a few hundred dollars instead of spending thousands extra on the Exceed. In addition to the good amount of space you have back here, Mitsubishi's also done some good thinking when it comes to how families are gonna use this car. And that means that, for example, in addition to the big kangaroo pocket you have here where you can put large items, you also have these two sub pockets up here. And on my trip, I found it was a great place to put things like nappies and also just some wipes up here, really just anything you need. And it makes traveling just that little bit easier. In addition to the USB plugs you have down here, which are always great for keeping devices topped up, Mitsubishi has put in a three pin power socket like you have in the home. And it's also got a lot more guts than you often find three pin sockets have in cars. And that means that also I found myself not just charging up devices, but turning this back seat into a bit of a mobile office at, uh, at times where I can have the air conditioning running and my laptop plugged in. Pretty cool. As I alluded to before, we have been hitting some limitations on the size of the boot with the Outlander. Now, it's certainly not tiny. It's almost 500 liters. However, there have been times when I've had to put some stuff on the roof racks. There's also the fact that you can't really put the cargo cover anywhere when it's not in position, which is a bit of a shame. Mitsubishi does give you multiple points that you can put it on, but ultimately, if you really need something big in here and you can't put it in the back seat, it has to go in the house, and that's a bit of a shame. Though, another point I will note is that this is a great height for changing nappies on. Ask me how I know. So I've taken this trip from Sydney to Adelaide and back uh, in quite a few different vehicles. I did it in our old Mazda 3 long-termer with its 2.5 litre engine, uh, my old uh, Subaru Outback long-termer. And so when it comes to judging what makes a, a good road trip vehicle over these conditions, I like to say that I have a fairly good idea. So it was comforting to see when I was out in my uh, Outlander here that it had a number of good things going for it. First thing, and, and the most immediate, is absolutely its overtaking power. It's got a good amount of power to 185 kilowatts and it comes in really decisively and it means you can have a really snappy overtake. And in my opinion, a safe overtake is a quick, precise overtake. Um, and it was really comforting having that sort of power under my right foot. The electric motors also brought a lot of quietness to the to the journey. You know, like you've often got a, a fairly rowdy engine in the back uh, in the back of some vehicles that you take along, and uh, whereas this, it was mainly the electric motor that was doing the driving. Um, even when I had it in in hybrid mode under hard acceleration, sometimes it would kick in, but the vast majority of the time, this is a very quiet cabin, and it's been a major strength not just of those long trips but just of living with this car day to day. Now as far as comfort goes well like there's some positives and negatives here so like the seats generally they're, they're okay however as the K's wore on I did start to see some fatigue my back got a little bit sore I played with the settings but it didn't really help all that much and this was despite the fact that my trip was broken up into two days whereas usually I just do it in one hard slog. A little bit disappointing to see that there and, and perhaps some further work to the comfort of the seat would be really good to see. However, the biggest negative of this car is undoubtedly its lack of a spare wheel. Look, I understand why Mitsubishi's done it. You know, they've got to fit a big battery pack in there. However, I still think we should at least see a space saver spare in there because it was really nerve wracking going on such a long journey with a little baby in the back. You know, you want to keep your family safe if the worst happens. Um, and uh, I suppose I was just a little bit nervous of uh, a few instances in particular. First of all, it's just the general puncture risk. But on some of those torn up highways that ha we have in Australia, I encountered one particularly fierce pothole uh, that sent up shockwaves through the cabin. And I just thought to myself, oh my gosh, what if I've cracked a wheel? And it turns out it was all okay. I didn't get a puncture, nothing went wrong. However, it would have been really great to have that peace of mind of an extra spare wheel. I don't know, maybe they should put one on the back like they did in the old days, or maybe that's a bit silly. Let me know in the comments down below. So this Outlander has got about 10,000 Ks on the clock now, seven of which I've done myself. So we still wanna do about 3,000 Ks to get over the line and really see what it's like over that 10,000 kilometer tenure. 
We've got a few things planned. We're gonna test it against its rivals to see what it's really like in terms of efficiency in the real world. I'm also, as I said before, going to see how far it can go on a single charge, and I've got a few other things planned. But what do you think of this car? What do you think of what we've talked about today? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And for now, that's all. Thanks for watching, Chasing Cars.